renewable energy. It's a nice fad, but it's way too expensive. What about poor people? It's all very well for those rich movie stars to drive around in their fancy Priuses and Teslas, but there's a billion people in the world who don't have access to energy of any kind. Are you telling me they're not allowed to use coal or oil or gas now? That's not very fair. One of the favorite arguments people have against climate action is that fossil fuels are a moral necessity. We need them, so they say, for energy here and now, as well as to help poor nations develop. But is that really true? We're rapidly getting to the point where no, it's not. When we look at where all the coal, oil, and gas reserves are in the world, they're not in Africa. Africa only has 6% of the world's remaining fossil resources. What about Latin America? Just 14%, most of those in Venezuela and Brazil. No, between them, North America, Europe, and the Middle East have almost 80% of the world's remaining fossil reserves. Expecting, or even requiring, developing countries to develop the exact same way we did isn't moral. It's inviting them to a lifetime of debt to rich countries that they'll need to buy their fuel from. And what's more, it's patronizing, like saying to them, Oh, you aren't ready for modern cars and cell phones yet. At your stage in development, you get the party line telephone and Ford Model Ts. Check back with us in 50 years. The latest news coming out of developing countries is proving those naysayers wrong as well. Pay as you go solar is taking Africa by storm, bringing affordable electricity to people who aren't on any grid, and growing the local economy in these communities. Solar technology has improved so much in recent years that the cost of solar is dropping below that of fossil fuels, shattering records along the way. And that's happening in countries without subsidies. In developing or emerging economies, including Mexico, Peru, India, and Dubai, new bids for solar energy are coming in below three cents per kilowatt hour. That is way cheaper than fossil fuels. Today, the idea that clean energy will be too expensive for developing countries to afford is already a myth. Hang on though, the naysayers will continue. Even if it is affordable, what happens when the sun isn't shining and the wind isn't blowing? Guess what? Energy storage, is where the biggest investments and some of the greatest progress is being made in the clean energy sector today. And the options are plentiful. Elon Musk has the power wall, an energy storage unit or a battery that you literally install on the wall of your garage, hopefully in combination with his new solar shingles, to power your house. Others are using old time approaches to store energy, like pumping water uphill, for example, when the wind is blowing and letting it run back down again when it's not or here in Texas, pumping water into old oil wells under pressure and then letting it back up again when it's needed. Innovative new solar farms from Spain to Arizona are using molten salt to store the heat on site. And Pacific Islands, including Kauai in Hawaii, are using solar and storage arrays to replace their dependence on expensive traditional energy sources that had to be imported. Adding storage to the grid allows renewable energy to supply baseload power, reducing the need for traditional sources of energy. Now, it's true, storage still does have a long way to go. But if you look at how far it's come over the last 10 years, you'll see that times are changing fast. At this point, with news of all these innovations, you might be surprised and even intrigued. But there's always a few diehards ready to grasp at the last straw. But aren't wind and solar energy bird killers? It would be safer for wildlife if we just kept on using fossil fuels. It's true that wind turbines do kill birds. They kill about 300,000 birds every year that die by running into their blades. But if we were really concerned about birds, there's an easy way to balance the scales. Did you know that cell phone towers kill six million birds a year? And outdoor cats kill three billion birds a year. That's right, reducing the outdoor cat population by 0.01% would have the same effect as getting rid of all our wind turbines. And that's not even counting the fact that every year, fossil fuel pollution kills 200,000 people in the United States alone and around the entire world, about two and a half million people. And that continued dependence on fossil fuels is estimated to lead to the total extinction, yes, the total extinction, of more than 30% of all species in the world. Cutting down on kitties won't fix that. 
I live in West Texas, where every time you turn around these days, it seems like there's a new crop of shiny white wind turbines that have sprung up overnight. I admit, I'm one of those people who thinks they look good, but I often hear from people who are concerned by the boom. Probably my favorite myth is the idea that too many wind turbines will, by capturing so much wind, slow the rotation of the Earth. They can't. But by continuing to use fossil fuels and unsustainably withdrawing water from underground aquifers and melting the massive ice sheets that anchor the poles, the irony is that we are affecting the Earth's axis of rotation. So if that's what you're concerned about, bring on the wind turbines. The reality is that we need energy, clean energy, that doesn't pollute our air and our water, that doesn't run out on us, and that can supply our needs and the needs of all of us who share this planet, old and young, rich and poor. Thank you for watching Global Weirding. Be sure to check out globalweirdingseries.com every other Wednesday for a new episode. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page, like us on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. Have a question about climate change? We want to hear it. We'll have a live Q&A on our Facebook page every other Thursday at 7 p.m. Central. See you next time.